Hello and welcome to session number 78 of Outlander's Guide to Lidaria. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Hey, hey. Hello. It's the middle of January and we are all in the middle of uh, recovering from being sick or in the process of becoming sick. <laughs> Let's, we'll take it easy for today. Try not to, to perish. IRL. Too late. Too late. E boop. Oh, wrong. Here's our table, which, there it is. Welcome, welcome, welcome. D <coughs> I said no dying. I specifically Sorry. requested it. Sorry, I'll be quieter. No, I'm, I'm talking to Matt. No oh. dying on the floor or elsewhere. Uh, Ijbal. Ij <laughs> I just, I just, Dennis. something on. I just, something out loud. I just burped out loud. Burst out laughing. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> I but just, it also I just censored it on for live me. TV. What? Ijbal. Like, like the JB is censored for me. Did you get your letters mixed around? I just uh, bust out laughing. Itch ball. Okay. No, I don't Oops. think so. Jb. Just burst. <clears throat> you you <laughs> can't so spring running. these riddles upon me right at the beginning of the session. Oh, okay, I get it. I was so convinced I was going to be missing a letter. <laughs> it is, you just have to find it. Anyways, Austin, recap! Ah! Ah! <laughs> that's, oh, Austin. that's so... That was so quick! I know you are prepared! Uh, yep. Um, this will be... Uh, you need to go to... The, this. The what? The this. The... Where are you pointing? Where's your hand? Your hand is green. It's... Green chair, maybe? No, no. Oh. This corridor. Ah. Ah. Sure. There is a thing. Hold on, let me... Oh, no. Oh, no. No music. Oh. <laughs> Why? <laughs> What's up, Squeakers? It's the Pippalicious here with another epic Wingspan video. Joining me on the other side of the table are our bird friends Glimmer, Mortimer the Third, and Boovin. Before we start, remember to peck that subscribe button and flock to comments below for a chance to win your very own Squeak plushie. Anyway, I chose this game today because since the last time we talked, we've been traveling through Misery's womb, faced all of the obstacles, and then Granny's sister Bramblefoot, Bramblesoot, forced me to play a really crappy gardening board game. And so, this one's better. Uh, the others joined in, and some seemed to enjoy it more than I did, like the Tryhard Pontifex and Sixes Every Roll Virian but I couldn't really enjoy it. I was distracted from the moment I drew the Aster card. Um, and so Bramblesoot promised me answers, and so I asked her about Aster. Apparently, Granny had adopted a kid some hundreds or thousands of years ago, and he died, but Granny, Granny just couldn't seem to get him out of her mind. Um, so, anyway, to cope, she kidnaps children from all over the place and makes them her pets. But I seem to be a little different in that she's never sent one out to go fetching ingredients for her before. Bramblesoot thought that it was weird because the three witches meet regularly and exchange materials and gathered ingredients that the others might not be able to get on their own. But... Granny has been keeping my ingredient lists a secret. So I made a deal with her to keep in touch and share what was on the list in exchange for more information. 
when it becomes available. Um, Virian poofed a few of our group over to the waking world and found all of our sleeping bodies stuck in some gross slime. One by one, we were woken up and felt awful afterwards. We're definitely going to need to get some rest because our next stop has us walking all across the desert lands once again to find the Collector in the Bloodstone Gorge. Uh, oh, uh, okay, I gotta stop playing now. Brooke just fell in a well. Bye! <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank, thank you austin when subway surfer is playing under a video just to like hold your attention <laughs> i really appreciate the birds i don't know what was happening but i appreciate it all the same i promise to those tuning in like right now that this is actually a D, D stream <laughs> bird spiration wait no. Wingspiration. Wingspiration, yeah. <laughs> Here you go. Also, check out Wingspan. It's a really good board game. We're it's not being great. sponsored. I promise. <laughs> I wish we were. <laughs> Consider me. Send money. I am. I'm dying. They pay me <laughs> in entertainment. <laughs> Consider sponsoring me. I'm cheap. <laughs> 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 I'm very affordable. <sighs> okay. So, indeed, last we left off, uh, the party had just left uh, the cave beneath the broken rib. Uh, they had found refuge in the unburnt part of the nearby forest, and uh, uh, they are settling down to recover. What is the plan? I'll We're help going you. down into the canyon, right? Um, yes, I meant for the day. Ah, okay. <laughs> uh, sh sorry, I should have specified. Uh, Arn will uh, find uh, his wand and his belongings and he'll hold it up and he'll say, Back in my tower? Yes, it's please. been a while. Um, I call dibs on the bathtub first. And he waves the wand around. And this time, out of snow and ice and pieces of broken, uh, uh, of broken twigs, out emerges uh, an otherwise familiar sight. The tower that uh, uh, you were so... You, you, Come, uh, you've gotten so accustomed to uh, a warm, safe place to rest for the night. Something you haven't been able to use in quite a while. Sorry about your drawing, but I'm about to, like, get rid of it. As soon as I find where I put the tower. No. <laughs> it's somewhere. Wow, it's been so long. There we go. Finally, huh? I also get to explore this place. The the doll huh? clinging to our uh, to Virion's uh, hair um, will proceed to like hop down and just run in. Like as he runs in, Virion just sort of yells after him, it's like, "You still? Where I can see you?" Oh. <laughs> He, he, he had just gone around a corner and he like sticks out a leg so you can see him. <laughs> Let's just compile it. Compliance, I approve. I'll, I'll keep an eye on him. What's the first floor? Oh yeah, it's up to me, isn't it? Ah, I summoned it. I'm not. I'm not used to this. Okay, <laughs> so we have a kitchen, bath, um, this, and uh, that. 
Okay, so immediately upon walking in, Pip just trudges over to the sack of flour and passes out. (laughs) This is actually the first time that you have seen Arn in his own tower, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. So he, he walks in and he pauses. He stands in in the uh, entrance for a few seconds. Pip pushes past him and just spreads out on the bag. Um, Arin sees everybody settling in. Like, they know this place almost better than he does. Uh, and he takes a deep breath and he... For just a moment, there is the smallest smile on his lips, but he's quick to, to hide it. You proceed to climb up the ladder to a different place. Uh, Are you yeah, think- all... Oh, go ahead, Sid. I think much like Pip, like Tekka is just like leaning on his quarter staff and then just like cr- almost crashes into the wall over here and <laughs> c- yeah, collapses in the pile. I think Brooke would try to go upstairs. Close his eyes when he's going past the saying that bass, bass, the bass top. And then gonna sit <laughs> towards the uh, sauna. <clears throat> Brute claims the sauna. Well, there is space for more. Yeah, old man's gonna join him in the sauna. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I should remove the grid because this is making things very difficult. <laughs> uh, well, it doesn't help. Uh, uh, how do you sit on a couch again? Perfect. <laughs> <clears throat> now, I'm not saying there are reasons why you should all position yourselves on the map wherever you're going to be, but yeah. just just go ahead. Um, so is everyone like just kind of conking out and immediately falling asleep? Basically, what, what it seems? Yeah. I, I hope people in the sauna are not going to pass out in it. It's not good. Yeah. yeah. Don't tell me what is good and not good. <laughs> <laughs> and of um, course I'm not going to sleep in the sauna I'm not stupid, I sleep in the bathtub <laughs> yeah, so I think because she's not planning on sleeping, Virion's going to go to where people aren't so she can you know, not worry about waking them up, but she's going to make sure Nefarian's staying with her, so he's not causing trouble right now surprisingly the bedroom is unclaimed yeah, which is r- weird. <laughs> uh, Sunny wanted it, but the bed isn't big enough for her. That's why she took the couch. Oh. <laughs> Sniffy, oh. He's over here. <laughs> I just saw how Sunny sits on the couch. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> she sleeps She's like beautiful. a horse standing up. <laughs> like <clears throat> flamingo on one leg. <laughs> So, question, because I know we roughed up Nefarianet a bit in um, mm-hmm. RO. How is he looking right now? Is he still looking pretty rough? Or There are scorch marks on the on on his fur the, where he got fireballed. Um, part uh, the seam that connects his right shoulder together, like the arm to the shoulder, is partially open, and you can see a little bit of the, the white cotton inside. Mm-hmm. Um, he doesn't have much of an expression, so you can't tell if he's even in pain or if you can feel it. Um, but yeah, he, he's roughed up. Yeah, so I think while everyone's kind of chilling, Virian's gonna see if she can find a needle and thread and like a, a washcloth and some soap, and she'll take Nefirian with her and keep him in line of sight, and while everyone else is getting sleep, she's gonna see if she can fix him up a little bit. Just fix that seam, get rid of some of the soot. Hey! Hey! 
What do you think you are doing with that needle? You have a... a rip right there. I'm just gonna see if I can... uh... close it up a little. I don't know if you can feel it, but... It'll, you know, save a little wear and tear down the road. But... Why? What are you... What kind of game are you playing? What do you think you are doing? You think that I will feel indebted to you? Like I owe you something? Because this... This means nothing to me. I mean, it's not even my thread, so it's... Consider it even, then. Just sit still, otherwise I... I've never been great at sewing, but... I can do a passable job. Fine. I will accept your offering. <laughs> and he and just she'll... pulls up his little yeah. arm. Little uppies. Yeah, I think she'll just take him and plop him on the bed. Yeah, just get him <laughs> a little cleaned up. Stitch him up. Plop him on the bed. <laughs> just plop on the bed. Um, I'm trying to think of what kind of check this would even be. Um, maybe sleight of hand? Sure. It's like a... A hand Dexterity. skill. Mm-hmm. <laughs> ah, yes. I grow more powerful with each passing minute. <sighs> you, you know, it's... If I hadn't seen what you could do, that wouldn't honestly be... I don't think I've ever been so intimidated by a stuffed bear before. I am... Terrifying. Absolutely, and, um... Uh, you know, I, I'm not even sure... I don't even know why I, I brought you here. Um, I'm sure everyone because else is going to have something to say about it. Because I requested it. I charmed you into doing my bidding. Oh, absolutely. I'm sure that's... That's entirely it. You are... You are cunning, and you are clever, and I don't think <laughs> I could ever outsmart you. Of course, I... Wait. Are you mocking me? Uh, no, but could you turn your head? You got some uh, oh. dirt behind your ear yeah. there. You know, um, you... You and I are going to go really far in this world. Would you like to know what I am made of? I mean, to me it looks like um, a fur and cotton fluff and maybe some buttons. No, no, no. What animates me, what keeps me alive, what I need to survive. Much like you are made of disgusting food. Is it misery because we've been over this that I don't think it's good for you? Close. It's more a sense of absence. When you miss something that is long gone. When there is that void, a hole in the back of your mind. And you can't quite remember what used to be filling it. I am made of that. Fearing gets quiet. I think she scrubs a little bit harder. Ow. No. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> you definitely know, um... How to get under people's skin, it seems. Not that I, I don't. It's honestly, it's uh, kind of fun sometimes. Would you like to see me do that literally? No, actually, no. I really wouldn't, no. Well, if you ever need me to, you know who to call. 
I'll keep it in mind. Now I know you don't want me to leave your sight. So, come the morrow, I want you to bring me to your blue wizard friend. You, you know what? I'm sure he'll love you. That is not the objective. <laughs> you finish stitching him up and uh, uh, he... Uh, he tests the uh, extent of his movements and he seems satisfied with your job. He doesn't really say thank you. Uh, it's he, he just... He expresses a sort of sense of gratitude in a very indirect way that implies that you are his minion doing his bidding and you mm -hmm. are doing a reasonable job in that regard. But... <laughs> This still comes across in a, as a thank you of sorts to you. Yes. Um, can you roll a perception check for me? Absolutely. Okay. Um, for the rest of the night... There are a couple of instances where Neferian attempts to leave the room and you catch him. Mm -hmm. uh, so he does not leave your sight overall. <laughs> does anyone want to do anything else before you click that delicious long rest button? Then go for it. I'm clicking it. I'm clicking <laughs> I it. I know you it missed it. Woo, it's ready to go. <laughs> Should have been elves. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I will be giving you a little bit of time to prepare your spells <laughs> and whatnot. Oh. Uh, bless you. Sorry. That's okay. Let it out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we recover one level of exhaustion. That's correct. So you would be down to level three. You have unlocked the new version of the tower song. Oh? <laughs> yeah, it comes with like the strings. And um, in the morning, you gather in the kitchen for, for breakfast? Yeah. Yes, uh, yeah. Uh, Arn <clears throat> is happy. Like, he, he, despite you guys having had access to this on your own for a while now, uh, he is acting as if uh, you are his guests. Uh, and so he, he keeps trying to provide the things that you need. He keeps trying to bring in the, the chairs as people show up and he keeps... He, he will be making breakfast for everybody. Um, and he... He keeps catching himself like telling you where things are and then realizing that you already know and there is no need and he just doesn't finish the sentence and he does this a few times before the... Like... Well, actually the awkwardness may not ever go away. He's just kind of like that. Um, but he's making an effort. <clears throat> Those of you nearby will notice that Pip is playing with his food and pouring pouring salt into his hand and sprinkling it on the table and takes out a few things from his bag uh, namely incense and charcoal and just starts laying them out on the table lighting some candles Setting the mood a little bit. <laughs> and then he just starts quietly chanting. Squeakash the rock, squeakash the rock, squeakash the rock, squeakash the rock. 
for uh, about an hour and ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> what is he doing? Magic. Uh, that is not how you summon a demon. Would you like me to show you how to do it properly? It is how you summon a devil. Oh. <laughs> I only know how to summon demons. I think Virian will just, I'm assuming she brought him down here with her. We'll just like plop him on the table in front of Pontifex. Like, you, you, do, you two talk. I'm sure you have a lot to in common. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think I set up the fairy net to be properly controlled by you, but like if okay. something doesn't work, we'll, we'll find out soon. But, sure. Oh. So he, during the one hour and ten minutes that it takes to summon to summon Squeak, uh, Netherinet clings onto Pontifex's, uh, um, the the coat, uh, climbs up to uh, onto his one of his shoulders and whispers in his ear, "I have something for you." And I think. It hears from under Pontifex's collar into its ear. Wow. <laughs> it's, no. like, it's turning into a hiss. <laughs> I think as he has like crawled like onto a lump in Pontifex's coat that was just Seraphist in there for It's back. She's gonna get set. Nefarinat hisses and jump climbs back onto Virian's head. <sighs> <gasps> that disgusting little animal. Yeah, uh, she is quite clean, actually. It is actually annoying how often she does it. <laughs> exactly. That's the disgusting part. If you want this to... This word you're using, I do not think it means what you think it means. <laughs> if you want to stay with us, you're going to have to get along with her. Fine, but I will sit across the table from her. As if anyone is going to be upset at such a revelation. <laughs> <laughs> um, the fair net will be like, I don't know, here. Uh, uh, whatever. Uh, but he'll be extending a little paw towards Pontifex. Now, I know a lot of things about you guys. Mainly because Mom was watching you after our little white-furred friend showed up. And I squeak, know... Gosh, the rocks get off my salt squeak, gosh. <laughs> 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 Uh, and I know what I can do for you to make myself useful, indispensable. Yes, you will never want to get rid of me after this. That also means that you have to stay with us, you know that, right? Well, yeah, no that's the what? idea. Uh, well, no, no, not much. The, if you stab me, I will leave. Or if you set me on fire, or if you hurt my feelings too much. Hmm. Anyway, you, the blue one, you have a book that I can help you decipher. Uh -huh. <laughs> the, uh, the, take it out! <laughs> Put it on the table! Oh. Do I have to spell everything out? I d yes. <laughs> <laughs> Where on the table would you like it? Not on the salt. Gosh, the rocks. Thank you, Squeak. Gosh, the rocks. 
<laughs> so, like, on the corner? No, just hand it over. Do you even have hands? I do not mock my absence of fingers. You don't even have cotton. You don't even have thumbs. Your eyes are liquid. I could squish them. Yours are manufactured. Yes, with despair. In the rocks. I find. Ah, uh, you hand the clarinet. <laughs> <laughs> the dust swept the grimoire. Um, and the Fairnet finds a spot that's not covered in salt and uh, opens <laughs> it out on the table. Uh, you and Devamia, way back, have made some progress on translating the spells within. Uh, and yeah, Aaron the, the also. One. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that's one spell. Mm -hmm. uh, Aaron has also helped you, helped you like make progress on deciphering more. Uh, but as Neferinet uh, opens it up and uh, um, with some difficulty due to his... Wait, no, hold on. He can, he can cast Mage End, can't he? Yes, he can. All right. So uh, that's how he can hold a quill. And he will begin to write on the margins. And he's making sure that you're watching. Like, he, he, he's showing off his understanding of uh, the language, but not just the language, also of the magic itself. Uh, unlike Aaron and Devamia, he's not merely like translating word for word, he's adding notes on how to actually perform the magic within. Uh, so, thus far, uh, what did I give you? Blood reading? Uh, yeah. And uh, do you like know the spell is it added to your book or do you just know that it's in there and you can copy it uh, no he he's deciphered the spell but he has not uh transcribed the spell yet okay um during the time that it takes pip to summon squeak and like in the following hour because i believe it takes two per wait you're a scribes no wizard. i'm a scribes wizard. it takes me minutes minutes okay uh, this is a first That's... level spell it takes me 60 seconds that means uh that you gain two first level spells added to your book um, Ooh. the first one is blood reading, which I believe I can, I should be able to just straight up add to your card sheet. Yes, blood read. And the second, which is also first level, is called, oops, that's not how you spell it. It's called preserve slash decay, uh, which is, uh, it's now in your card sheet, uh, it's now part of your spell book. Um, it is. It essentially prevents or accelerates uh, spoilage of living matter, or non-living matter. No longer living. Oh, um, oh, oh! oh Preserve decay is at first level. Mm -hmm, they're both first level. Oh. With <laughs> I guess referee here at all. <laughs> With Nefernet's help, uh, you find that there is uh, uh, more spells inside of this book up to level fifth, sixth. Sorry, um, those will take longer to actually decipher and obtain. Mm -hmm. Um, and from, like, the speed it did this, you figure he already had some, like, knowledge ahead of time of these particular spells so that he could just easily do this for you. Um, so, um, like... Did this cost me the, the, like, gold cost for the spells? No. Oh, cool. Just the time. Which apparently is, like, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it is like sort of the whole thing, you know, scribing spells. Mm -hmm. I haven't really gotten into like making scrolls, but I can do that too. But, uh, hey, cool, these are uh, interesting spells. This one is a little macabre, but the other is uh, useful. They 
there's more devastating power where this came from. Really? Of course. <laughs> All you have to do is embrace it. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot that we haven't really met that well. Uh, my name is Pontifex Vas Dalus Alenach, and I am perhaps uh, the person who has most embraced chaos amongst everyone of Plurna. Then you and I are going to be really good friends. If you keep feeding me wizard spells, <laughs> I am surprised to say this, but I agree. Yes, like you will you, you never want. You will never want to rid yourself of me. I am a cornerstone of this group. You're you're not entirely incorrect, actually. Is, is your actual name Nefarianet, or is that just what you call yourself to sound more menacing? It is sort of a mouthful. I... It is my name, and you will respect it. At least, it is the name I want you to call me. My true name you shall never learn. Uh, whenever they say that, uh, can I cast Detect Thoughts and try to detect their thoughts? Yes, you thoughts? can. <laughs> I will do mm -hmm. Uh, and I'm going to, well, as they're saying that, try to just get what I get on the surf. Are they yeah. thinking of their name? You can. Um, so you cast a spell, and for what might be perhaps the first time in your life, you hit a wall. Just straight up. It feels like you slammed into it with your face. Uh, Nefarinet, you understand, is under the effect of mind blank. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Although, I don't see anything here that would mean that... He would know that you just did this. Um, so, like, just you smirk and look at him, and then, like, nothing happens. <laughs> yeah. That's, like, a little off putting. And uh, he closes the book and hands it over to you. Uh, and, Pip, you finish your ritual. Before you emerging on this array of salt and incense and charcoal uh, appears the form of Squeak uh, with a seashell covering each <laughs> eye. Uh, he is wearing a crown of coral uh, in colorful uh, decorative array. Uh, there is a platter uh, resting on his chest where he's he's laying down on his back and on this platter appears to be some form of cake maybe made out of fish or something um toenails seem to be ma like pedicured well done <laughs> he doesn't seem to notice that the location has changed <laughs> spa day it's so nice of the summoning spell to actually bring the platter with him. <laughs> he yawns, takes a hand, uh, and scrapes the, the platter and puts some of this fishy cake into his mouth. Ah. A devil! Eh? Eh? What? flicks the seashells off of his head. They scatter onto the ground. He looks around. No! 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 <laughs> oh. <laughs> Shakes his fists. <laughs> Look at this one. He's smaller than me. Who is this? What's going on? Hello? I am your replacement. You are obsolete now. 
Oh. Oh, okay. What? Can I go back now? Why does nobody in this group react the way I expect them to? We've seen some weird stuff. Mm. Come on, guys. Weeks. Today of all days, you have to summon me back. Is today a special day? Yeah, it's a special day. It's my birthday. Well, of uh, course we would want to see you on your birthday. Well, that makes that makes one of us. <laughs> Surprise! Uh, kicks the fish uh, cake onto the floor. Arn goes to grab a, a broom. <laughs> Well, We're signing what do you want? Left. <laughs> Why have you brought me back? Um, hey, it's week. Happy birthday. Um, I have some ingredients I want to get to Granny. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Here, put them in the bag. That's what I'm good for. I'm the bag guy. <laughs> Duh. It puts them in the bag. Um, it's the... you have two, right? Yes, the sulfur and the... Uh, ember glow wisps? Firefly things, yeah, ember glow wisps. <laughs> <laughs> the items are swallowed into the bag. The next time you look inside, it is empty. I never was so quiet today. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I hope you have enjoyed your vacation. We will soon travel again. Yeah, it was great. Y'all look terrible, though. What, what do you last remember from that cave? I, uh, I walked into the cave. Turned invisible. Yep, yep. turned invisible. Started I flying went up ahead. ahead. And then, and then, he was at the beach. Yep, that's it. He has like a feeling like he got struck by something, but it was like a moment, one hit. And in the following few days, uh, he started to wonder. Uh, he he may not say this, but like, as he wasn't called back the day after. And not even the day after that, he actually thought that Pippin had made it. That he was just gone. Not gonna mention that part. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> My secret hopes and desires. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think uh, Tekka might just like shuffle his finger uh, against uh, one of the shells uh, that Squeak was using. <laughs> Well, tanning or whatever. Um, so you decided to just shield your eyes from what uh, can happen. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't bear the thought. Bear? <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> so, um... So, what I miss? Uh, tell it to me in 20 words or less. <laughs> I have arrived, an agent of evil and chaos, to spread destruction and misery and... And you're done. Is it that 20 word? Yep. Uh. Well, now why don't you tell us your deepest fears and your most shameful secrets? 
in 20 words or less. Um, no. <laughs> what if I were to say your true name? Uh, I've told everyone my name. Everyone knows my name. What? It's, it's Queen Castorax Jr. Have you heard of Why my dad? Why would you do that? <laughs> well, now I can summon you. Huh? That should come in handy should anything happen to the child. Huh? Yes. Can summon devils? I hold power far beyond your imagination. Can you summon my dad? Would you like me to? Yeah! Ah, uh, Nefirinet will fall off the chair. It's a little too high for him. Um, scramble on uh, next to her and climb onto her leg, hold, like hug her knee like a koala, and he will say, Take me to the world of dreams. You know, I wasn't planning on going for... Next time I go, I'll take you with me, okay? <sighs> okay, and then I will summon him. No, yeah, next time we're, we're in the world of dreams, you can come with me, and then you can summon Squeak's dad. The pact is sealed. Nice. Beer <laughs> 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 and you have a, a an assortment two of hats. creatures. You have two shoulders. Yeah, two shoulders, two things she can carry. At some point while people are down the kitchen you know catching up on what happened and everything like that she'll kind of peel both squeak and the fairy net off her yeah. and want head squeak back to pip and probably hand the fairy net to brooke oh. and just, ah, oh, a new master an, uh, just keep an eye on him i'll, I'll be back shortly I hold Nefarionet up on the neck like a cat. I shall corrupt your heart. <laughs> All right. And before we leave for the day, Nefarionet's going to go upstairs. She's going to go up to the bedroom and do something she's never done before, and she's going to take a nap. <gasps> oh, it's, my goodness. It's like 20 minutes. She's going to go, and she is going to fall asleep. Bum, bum. 48 hours remain. <laughs> <laughs> beds! Um, elves don't have beds quite like these. Usually no. in their in their bedroom, uh, they have this area that's uh, filled with cushions and pillows, and it's made so that you can sit on it with your back being sustained by the pillows uh, in the most relaxing pose possible. Uh, but, you know, you've laid down on beds and couches, not to nap, but, like, to recover from injuries and such, or uh, just rest your legs. Uh, and this one it would be the first time where uh, you try this particular bed and it's comfortable, and it strikes you that this tower I, belongs to an elf, like a pure-blooded elf. And this is the first time where you notice, like, the fact that there is a bed here. Um, seems well there's something to it but for the time being you don't quite know what but you have uh, officially hired a babysitter for, for <laughs> the next uh, half an hour <laughs> and you, li you lie down um, you you join your hands uh, over your belly and uh, you, you put uh, you, the fingers of one end around uh, the ring on the other and you twist it a little bit you just twirl it and close your eyes and it's an odd sensation. You don't think you might ever get used to it. A sort of willing act of falling unconscious that somehow isn't bad. It's just strange. It's very alien. 
Would you like to do anything in the world of dreams? No. This is the first time she's ever been able to just shut off her thoughts for a little while. And she's taking full advantage of it. Normally when trancing, there is something going on. And it's almost as intense as uh, uh, your thoughts usually are when you are awake. Um, normal stuff. Thoughts mulling over emotions and events, uh, planning the future, uh, even just uh, practicing uh, within your own mind, your own skills, uh, uh, your ability to, to fight. But this is quiet. You feel like you could potentially go places, do things, but you can also choose not to. Time passes really quickly. When you wake up, just feel good. You also crave coffee. <laughs> <laughs> One of us. <laughs> yeah, when she comes back down, she says nothing of this, but does ask for a cup of coffee. <laughs> Which Aaron will be happy to provide. Yeah. Uh, Neferinet has been bounced around your intestine between Brooke and Sunny. Um, yep. Sunny seems to be one of the few people here who is genuinely um, put off by the doll and doesn't really like to hang out near him. Uh, which Neferinet, the moment he realizes that there is something, someone whose nerves he can get onto, uh, then he clings to that and he will attempt to just bother her as much as possible. Every time she buzzes her, or he buzzes her, I will start poking him and be like, Stop it! <laughs> a spray bottle? <laughs> yeah, it was a water <laughs> bottle. Shoo, shoo! <laughs> okay. Anything else for um, before you set off? Then retrieve your minis. I'm about to clear the table. Are it's your responsibility. Huh? Boot salt circle is gone. Yeah. And this number. Um do you want to leave now or do you plan to spend a few days in the tower to like recover from your exhaustion um what level like three is a is advantage on attack rolls and saves while we're level two so mm -hmm. like we'd Speed be out. hobbling along anyways until yeah. we're at least at one it would take twice as long unless we just yeah sleep it off I don't think the professor is willing to just like stay inside the tower the whole time, but just like, kind of putts around for a few days, and play around with his new spells or something. Maybe talk with Aaron about like his library and anything interesting. Maybe play some, start a game of dragon chess, that kind of thing. Does uh, um, everyone agree to just spend a few days here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah That's okay. Good. Because uh, we're not in, like, a super hurry, right? Nothing I'm, like, forgetting. No, you know, there's just Alex at the bottom of the sea. Nothing to worry about. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Aaron isn't speaking up, so I should be fine. Um, Aaron is concerned for you guys. He, you have been through a hell that uh, um, he and Viren haven't quite experienced. Uh, he can see the following day that you are just... He is actually undead, but you guys are moving around like zombies, just shambling across the tower. Uh, when you can see that he's ready to go the following morning, he has his backpack, he has his boots on, he's putting on his cloak, and he, and he looks around at the state of everybody in the kitchen, and he takes off his cloak. He doesn't say anything, um, and he will make an effort not to show that like he'd rather go. Um, he doesn't want to put pressure on you guys. Um, traveling 
in a hurry would be useless if you guys die on the way. Um, and instead he'll be... He's very bad at this, but he's going to be your, your parent for the next few days and he keeps <laughs> making sure you all have like warm soup in, in you and that you're sleeping comfortably. Um, and that uh, nothing disturbs you as you recover from the... Uh, from, from Israel's womb. Uh, so you spend a few days. Uh, do you want to get rid of all levels of exhaustion before you leave? So like a total of uh, three days? I feel like... I don't know. Uh, sure. Maybe... Yeah. I mean, at the very least, at, at least we got to exhaustion two. level one. Yeah. yeah. We need to sleep at least two more days just so our speed isn't rough. <laughs> it, okay. it would take the professor six full seconds to make it ten feet. Oh. <laughs> like it, it will be brutal. And your horses are like way back in Tenard's tower, aren't they? Yeah. So he would just be like shuffling along all the time. Pip, Pip can <laughs> summon some mounts, but definitely not safe at this exhaustion level. <laughs> Maybe you attempt it and like Pontifex falls off immediately and you're like, no, another day. Nope. Yeah. So, if we're resting at least a couple days, that means Pip gets to learn the polymorph potion. Mm -hmm. After 80 hours of study. Except, Pip gets to How many hours like were the... you missing? 14. 14? Um, with uh, Arin available, that is halved. Oh. Does Arin also help mitigate the cost? <laughs> Apparently, um, learning a rare recipe, learning the recipe, costs 500 gold. You have to Whoa. practice it. You have to spend the, the ingredients. Um, I'll tell you what. So, you currently have disadvantage on stuff, but Arin doesn't. So, he can attempt to ease the cost of the ingredients uh, uh, by seeking things out uh, um, just in the area. So, I'll just roll for him. Arin, do you for... have money? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have no more uh, money. I I have not been anywhere near Zasberg for a long time. Where do and I get money? Pip, it is less about the money and more about the ingredients. Oh. I'm really poor. I will keep you fed and clothed and healthy. I'll look for some money for you, I suppose, but not out here. I will not find it growing on a tree. Okay, rest up. Back in bed, under the blanket. I'm going to find you the ingredients. Thanks. What's our ends? Uh, uh, survival plus eight. It's a 22. <laughs> Meaning, I need to move my dice. Sorry, this is a bad place to have my roller. Okay. Ah, uh, he can. The how many do you have? Five hundred. Like uh, uh, in, in ingredients. That's how much to, it's to... supposed to cost. Yeah. Have you like removed any yet? Nope. I have thirty-seven gold. Oh. oh. I don't think he can like make it zero. Is this a is this a cost? Is this a potion that you're learning from Arian's own notes that you had found yeah. in the tower? Yeah. Okay. That does simplify things. Like, it's... Normally, you have to experiment to figure things out. Here you have written instructions and a teacher. Like, literally the person who has done this and figured this out. Um, so... What you can do is that you can consider it essentially learned in terms of, like, time spent. Um, but you will still need to find additional ingredients to cover the cost, mm -hmm. uh, even after the two days. Ooh, uh, my master of the cauldron feature has the has the price. So it's Hold only on. two fifty. Uh, I can craft potions in half the time and half the price, but not learn. I guess doesn't affect learning. <clears throat> So, yeah, learning would still be 500, I guess. Okay. 
Um, RM will help you with finding ingredients, not just during these days, but also as you travel towards a Bloodstone Gorge. Uh, so, in the next uh, foreseeable amount of time, you should be able to finish it. Um, and again, not because of the time that you need to spend, but because of the cost that you need to cover. Yeah. <coughs> we can do 50 gold per day, essentially. Um, does that sound reasonable? Yes. So you have 100 covered out of 250 by the time you guys decide to leave. Nice. Thanks, Aaron. You're not going to turn me into anything against my will, are you? No. No, you have to drink it to turn into a thing. Right. Oh, but Squeak will get some seawater for you in exchange for your help. I thought he was already doing that for me. Yeah, but now it feels more like a deal and less like a charity. Which I think he is, prefers. Is that how you were seeing it? No. I just wanted to help you. But Squeak <laughs> is a selfish little rat. <laughs> you see Aaron crossing his arms for a moment, like just trying to read you, and then just nodding <laughs> in acceptance. Uh, all right. Can you get to those uh, horses ready tomorrow? Yeah. And we'll be leaving soon. Just... Mm. He tucks you in. And you remember when uh, a fake Aaron had done the same. And like there's a moment, a small moment of tension where like you look at him and you're reminded of this memory of that betrayal, all those gestures <clears throat> of love and uh, and care that had come from Viren and Aaron and it hadn't been either Viren or Aaron. Uh, and you remember how awkward Aaron, quotation marks, was when uh, pulling the blanket over you and making sure it was okay and like this is very yeah. similar, but in... A different way. He's making a genuine effort. And he doesn't really linger much. He just leaves the room afterwards. He closes the door behind him. Then five seconds later, opens it again and sticks his head through and says, Oh, good night. And then closes the door again. Good night. And today is the day. Can I do one more thing? Oh, yes. I think towards one of the evenings where Brooke is practicing with Tekka and Ollie, just getting Brooke more used to it. <clears throat> Brooke will have looked more carefully at Tekka over the last few days and then just approach him. So, Tekka. I haven't asked since, but I just wanted to see how you're doing with all that, with all that wolf stuff. Has there anything changed? Have you feel felt anything change? That cave. Whatever happened in there. It wore us all down. I could sense something other approaching. <sighs> if we had continued on, trapped in a nightmare, I do not know what would have happened. the exact reason why we are doing this. Maybe we, we should, like, because I didn't notice, I didn't know for sure. Maybe if you feel like that and we're not, like, in a situation where it's life or death, feel free to speak up to take a rest.
We already pause. tried taking a rest. Brooke, our group is always in a situation. Well, we haven't been the last two to three days, and not gonna lie, it felt pretty relaxing, even though we have a lot to do. So, if we can, maybe taking like a day off every now and then to just rejuvenate wouldn't be too bad because we have seen what those werewolves can do to us. Right? Brooke, the world keeps moving. Every other we are not. And if I am, I am Tekka on Borrow of Time, then I will spend every minute. All right. That's okay too. Um, just keep that in mind. I will. Brooke, next you should try this. Uh, and like, uh, Tekka's like shuffling, uh, it's like sitting with knees down, and it's like waving you down, asking you to do the same. My <laughs> brook will go down on his knees, still tall. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and we, we like, we see Ollie, he's just like distracted with this little, um, uh, I think it's like a, um, Oh, almost like a pine cone or something. Like you're just like scratching it. Um, okay. Ollie often reacts to vibrations. So I want you to teach him a rhythm. Something like this. And like take up a like knock on the ground in a certain pattern. Uh, and you can see like that gets all his attention. Ooh. All right, Brooke will try it. Two short taps, one long tap. You should probably do a roll, right? See how uh, it works. Indeed. So, because uh, this is still a day where you would have disadvantage on ability checks, but yeah. you also have Tekka as uh, uh, your mentor, it would be a straight animal handling roll. Hey. All right. Oh. <laughs> Progress with Ollie appears to still be slow. It's there. Um, just right now, you're able to to get closer to him than ever before. Uh, but you still haven't been able to touch him. And uh, right now, this particular exercise, Ollie hears the vibrations, recognizes the knocking. But besides looking your way, and like in a way where you can tell he's more checking for danger than recognizing recognizing a, a rhythm that he can remember that he can memorize. Um, I lost that sentence. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, he, he seems more concerned by the noise rather than enjoying the rhythm and, and like beginning to recognize it. Oh wow, look at that. He looked Tekka. <laughs> <laughs> Brooke is genuinely excited. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Tekka can recognize that all is a little spooked. <laughs> like the knocking is too loud. <laughs> yeah. I, I think this is like uh, <laughs> I I don't know if Brooke will recognize it as such, but it's almost like a, a pitying pat on the on on Brooke's back. It's just like <laughs> it is a path on the journey. Yeah, you're right. If you stay at something, you'll get there. <laughs> and I'll repeat the knocking. <laughs> <laughs> Brooke, since you have asked me something. I will ask you something similar. 
having right. Sunny back, your companion, do you not feel the same that you cannot waste a single minute? You have been away for so long. Have you become so familiar with it already? Ah. Uh. Not gonna lie. Yes, I don't want to waste any second. But enjoying the time we have together at the moment is where my focus is on mainly. It's like having already lost her twice without any proper warning before that. It does put things in perspective. Like, I don't know what the future will bring, so I can't really rush towards it. So instead I try to at least spend the time close to her, not let her out of my sight as much. One day we will be at the sea's borders. And some may try to catch her. You should be prepared. He's silent for a second. I think... I'd like to believe she knows that as well. So when the time comes, whether she wants to go further and take on the risk will be up to her. But I'm not letting anyone take her for anything. I'm not gonna lie, she is quite capable herself, and usually, at least when we, when I did lose her, it was more because of decisions I made. So maybe making those decisions together properly will help. We should av avoid mountains and towers. Quick question from me as a player. Do I know why and I just forgot? Why she's afraid of heights? Oh, no. Oh, okay, that's what it was connected to. <laughs> I thought there was something <laughs> about towers and mountains. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 it's, it's heights. <laughs> well, not gonna lie, that is kind of funny that someone who is usually as strong and as positive as her can get scared so easily. But yeah, we should avoid it. <laughs> I <I've been laughs> <gone. laughs> Yeah, but I think with that, we probably just keep trying. Yeah. Knock, 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 knock. Like the people in the floor below. <laughs> Pontifex in the sauna, just hearing the knock. It must be something with the plumbing. What is plumbing? <laughs> <laughs> I have an idea for a thing called plumbing. <laughs> What if I could deliver water to any room? Genius. <laughs> okay. And on that note, it's time to leave. Uh, Pip provides the horses, Aaron knows the terrain, and you're not taking a path that you haven't already seen, or at least you're trying to stick to uh, the, the same route that you originally took. Which oh, it didn't look like that. <laughs> 
Matt, can you roll? Actually, no. Um, hmm, hmm. Yes. No. I'll I'll roll for Arian's survival. Okay. <laughs> Unless I just dropped the die. <laughs> God, at the beginning, the water. at the beginning, Aaron takes it kind of slow. Uh, he keeps checking, he keeps looking back uh, at you guys and uh, uh, making sure that you're keeping up uh, and that uh, um, the horses are fine, Pontifex isn't falling off of his, uh, Phoenix isn't stealing my dice. No! <laughs> oh god. <laughs> we won! <laughs> Phoenix is on our side. <laughs> Still with the 20! <laughs> I to lock you out. Whew, okay. <laughs> that that was tragic. That was that was very close to being a disaster. Um yeah, uh Arn is making sure that uh, everybody's okay and is keeping up pace and he's not falling off the horses. Um and the beginning of the journey, uh the first day, uh progresses just fine. Um for now, the landscape changes very little. The only indication that you're making any progress is that the rib, uh, the broken rib, is getting further and further away every time you look back behind you. Um, but you're still in an area of snow that is uh, mainly uh, clear enough for the horses to pass through. Um, you are in a, in a forested area right now where the trees are very sparse there's a lot of space in between each individual tree um and uh, it goes by um without any interruptions without anything uh, bothering you and no surprises uh, uh for now um Austin, you can count another 50 gold pieces worth of ingredients off of your uh, the potion you're currently working on Thanks, Aaron. He shows up with his little basket uh, that is just full of plants. Uh, he has this ability to find them. Like, you need to spot an ingredient before you can get it, but like because he's so familiar with the ideal conditions of where uh, the ingredients he's looking for would be growing, um, he can just point at a patch of snow that looks just like any other. So he goes over and moves the snow aside with his foot, and there's the flower that he's looking for. There's uh, the particular root that uh, um, he needs to get for you. I need to get this cat out of this room. I I'm sorry. Ah, hold on a second. <laughs> it's energetic. Wow. You're so good at that. <laughs> Arian finds a cat in the wild and he brings it out of the tower. <laughs> uh, I can yeah. use that. What? <clears throat> okay. My dice are restored to there. Please. Sorry, he knocked over a lot of stuff. Okay. Half? Um, no, not true. Who would like to roll a d6? Me! I got it. Oh, oh. Go for it. Go. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. All you. <laughs> Let's go. Does that count? Or another roll? Huh? Oh, three. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, it absolutely counts. Hmm. That would be where's my D12. Oh. Sid, why does she need a D12? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> What'd you do? <laughs> Count how many rays of disintegrate happen. <laughs> <clears throat> On the second day of travel, you um, fold up the tower and resume the journey. Uh, the landscape is much as I described it earlier. Uh, still cold, still very sparse trees that slowly begin to open up. The snow is thinner, but still uh, ever present. Um, and you can. This is a moment where you're beginning to feel the shift in temperature, although it's it's very slight. It's still very cold. Uh, Tekka, mm -hmm. by by coincidence, 
Uh, as... Uh, oh, and the pip roll for your horse type. <laughs> oh, yeah. <clears throat> D8, right? Mm-hmm. I believe That's so. Or Or so means tough. Is they tough. regenerate hit points every round. Regenerating horses. <laughs> okay. Uh, these horses remind you of Arin in the sense that there comes a moment when one of your horses trips poorly and like breaks one of its legs. Uh, and then Time to get your gun out he of just stands back <laughs> up. Oh, um, never mind. They look a little bit undead. Um, but like impossible to kill. Like you could just... Uh, fireball them and it'd still be standing uh, <laughs> and they they all this is the type of horse that follows Arin just perfectly all the other ones sometimes they get distracted and they act they act more animal like but the this particular group of them uh, he he it's like he's waving around a wand and they're just following all of his instructions uh, Tekka it's <laughs> Still early in the morning, a few hours before noon. Still, there's still that morning chill. Um, the air around here is quiet enough. There's some sounds of wildlife, but it's all muted. Uh, this is a permanent uh, winter. Uh, not a whole, not a whole lot of uh, animals are around at all. Uh, and then you, what you notice, what catches your attention, is not something around you exactly, but it's something in your backpack. Oli is agitated. You can feel him um, turning around over and over at a time when usually he'd be asleep. Um, do, do pangolins make noises? Oh, they do. I don't remember at the okay. moment what they are. Um, we're going with a classic, like, just give an animal dog-like properties. There's a bit of a, <laughs> of a whine. Uh, just the softest little sound that is very, very unique to Ollie, but you you understand all of its uh, vocalizations uh, merely just by having spent so much time uh, with Ollie. Uh, something is uh, scaring your friend. Halt. Something is wrong here. Arin comes to a very sudden stop, and all the horses do the same. He uh, looks around and then back at you. What is it? Ollie is Ollie. sensing something. Ollie? Oh. And you see Arin pause, like, why would your pangolin notice something that nobody else has? Um, and, like, he, he squints his eyes a little bit in like in this doubtful manner uh, and then he seems to decide to take um, to take your word for it uh, he climbs down from the horse uh, and he's just on high alert uh, any idea what it might be uh, I think Tekka is letting uh, Ollie down on the ground and sort of like reading his reaction. Ollie immediately starts moving in a certain direction, like he's running away from something. Hmm. He's very slow. <laughs> there must be something there. Uh, it pointing in the opposite direction where Ollie is running from. Mm hmm. Uh, everybody can roll a perception check. Ah, uh, Tekka? Mm -hmm. Does this count? Um, uh, kind of? No, uh, I guess not. Okay, I just roll your standard uh, check. Yeah, I would count it. Uh, actually, instead of perception, could Tekka try to read the emotions of the other animals here? Like the Tresem and the horses? Yeah, go for it. Do a roll an animal handling check instead. Mm-hmm. 100% as soon as... Um, 
Tekka brings up that Ali is scared. Virin is just making sure Nefarian is where he should be. <laughs> um, you... It's odd that this is even happening, but you have started to get used to the weight of Nefarianet on your shoulder. Um, you know, in the same way that you don't really feel the clothes that you're wearing. So, like, there's these moments where you're like, oh shit, where is he? And you turn your head and he's right there on your shoulder. Uh, and this is one of those moments. So, um, like, you look at him and he just pulls his hands up in the air like, I didn't do anything. Oh, uh, good. Glad to see it. Keep that up. Hmm. Okay. Uh, this makes it uh, Virion and uh, Brooke. Uh, Brooke, you have just learned a couple of days ago that Ollie is very sensitive to tremors. Uh, and uh, so your instinct as you look over in the direction that Ollie is running away from, uh, and you don't see anything, just open field and snow, uh, your, your reaction is to kneel down and to listen to the ground. You put a hand on the snow and you sink it deep into it until you find solid uh, earth. And it's so faint, but it's shaking. Virion, um, for you, it's more uh, just the... Let's go with the meme. It's more your elven eyes. Uh, <laughs> you can see just a little bit further than everybody else can. You're, you're used to scou uh, scouring the horizon at sea um, and catching just the smallest changes in, uh, um, in the environment. Uh, and, well, you don't see anything. You look around in other directions, and when you look back any direction that Ollie is moving away from, you could swear that a mount of snow has shifted. Like it rose a little bit. And now that you're looking at that particular spot in the snow, you can see that the terrain is shifting far away from you, but like the snow is being lifted up and then it falls back down almost like a wave. Uh oh. Uh -oh. I don't know what it is, what is coming, or is over in that direction, but it's definitely... Well, you can feel it through the earth. So, Viren will just point to where like the sh snow is moving, and I don't know what it means for snow, I'm not used to this weather, but uh, usually in the water, if a wave is coming at you, you do not want to be where it is when it hits. Aaron speaks up very quickly and says, Back on the horses, then. Yeah, no Tekka will uh, pick up Ollie, just clutching him uh, against his chest, and yeah, start moving. I would like to ask for a group survival check. Everybody rolls it, uh, apply your bonuses as uh, they uh, are relevant, and we will average them out. I'm good at these, don't worry. Oh boy. <gasps> uh, use Aaron's. Uh, I guess Nefarianet gets one, yeah? Uh, no, just no, just no, okay. those who are okay, like cool. uh, moving the horses. Cool, cool. So all the adults, I don't know. Ooh, that's that sunny. sunny. Yeah. Okay, so I have uh, starting with a nine from Pip. I have Pip, Virion, Brooke, Tekka, Sunny. Oh, Pontifex. Is Matt here? Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I was just like, oh, these are good. I saw the 20. I was like, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Problem solved. Uh, I'll be needing a survival check from you, too. Yep. yep. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and then there's my roll. And then 
and uh, you already did our end, right? I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right? It should be divided by seven the total. There's five of you. There's Sunny and uh, Aaron. I'm not forgetting anyone. Nope. Which makes it a an average of thirteen against versus that block. Um, <laughs> I have a rules question. <laughs> oh, for don't. for for no particular reason, it's and it's not relevant to anything that is going on right now. But like, in the case of something chasing something else, uh, and in the case of a tie, uh, which one is the contested rule? Like, I feel like we set the DC and it meet it, so it beats it. If it's a, so if it's a contested roll where it's two dice rolling against each other, a tie means uh, nothing changes. The status quo is maintained. If there is a difficulty check, uh, and it meets that number, then meets beats. But anytime it's opposed, nothing changes. That's why, like, if you do a grapple check and they tie, the grapple doesn't work. Uh, or at the same mm -hmm. time, if they're already grappled and they try to make a grapple check to escape and it ties, then they don't escape. It, okay. it just means nothing changes. That's true. Yeah, this isn't really... I know I made it a group check, but it's really not much of a DC. It's more of a contested check. Yeah. Uh, you have convinced me, but this literally couldn't have been any closer. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you get your horses to run as fast as they will go. Uh, with Arin taking the lead and the horses being so... Uh, like... They are so beaten to him in a way that's just unnatural and a little spooky. They're supposed to be your creatures, Pip, uh, but like Arin has taken over them uh, and you are no longer in control. Luckily, Arin seems to know what he's doing. He does take you off a different path uh, and you're no longer in, the f in a familiar environment that you remember passing on the way to the Broken Rib, uh, but he doesn't get lost. He, he just circles around and then eventually manages to find the path back that you guys originally took. Um, and it's impressive enough. The surroundings here kind of look all the same, uh, but he doesn't lose his uh, uh, sense of where he is and where he's heading off. Uh, and as your horses are riding and riding as fast as they can, every once in a while you look back. And sometimes you see nothing. And sometimes you see what Varian pointed out, a change in the landscape as if it, as if the earth itself is breathing, taking in air and then exhaling it again. At some point, you're beginning to hear it. You hear the earth shaking. Uh, as you're galloping, you don't really feel it under the, the horse's hooves. Uh, but you hear just the rustling of the leaves and the branches of the trees around you, as if there's a sudden wind. Um, Arin comes to a stop at some point as he needs to uh, figure out if he's turning left or right, and at that moment where everybody's still, that's when you're feeling the vibrations themselves. This, whatever this is, it's very close. Arin looks back and realizes he has no time, he takes one path, all the horses follow again. And you gallop and gallop and gallop. The sun sets and Arin doesn't stop. The the horses need, need to be resummoned every once in a while. And every time there's this shift in having to uh, let Pip bring other creatures into existence. Uh, and you have to dismount the first set and mount the second one. You always feel like something's getting closer. And you have seconds left before you finally take off again. You are very tired by the time you no longer hear the ground shaking. You no longer see anything shifting behind you. There's no natural light and you're relying on, on Pontifex and um, whatever magical means you have, and non-magical, to make light. You summon the tower with a certain uh, rush and you all climb in and lock the front door. 
uh, for this particular uh, evening, Arin opts to have the the top floor that is the the, the observatory with, with the with the telescope, uh, and he spends the evening there on the lookout. Uh, you guys keep watch. You take your shifts. But morning comes and uh, nothing has snuck up on you. However, Arin looks a little pale by the time you've all woken up. Um, he makes you rush through your breakfast and uh, uh, gets Pip to have the horses ready to go as soon as possible. Um, you're not running away as fast during the morning, but he, he is um, very keen on putting as much distance between himself and whatever he saw during the night as possible. Um, Oren <clears throat> will describe a creature that he spotted during the night. Swimming through snow and dirt as if it was water. Uh, he just described it as like a really big, really long worm that is made of ice. Uh, with a mouth big enough that could swallow a pape's horses. But none of you ever do spot it. Eventually, the snow is beginning to melt. Uh, <laughs> is this the tiny ones? <laughs> <clears throat> And the snow is beginning to to uh, to melt, and you're finally feeling an actual intense shift in temperature. It's getting warmer. You're beginning to take off your gloves and your um, and your pelts over the next few days. Uh, and the the earth, for one day of travel, it turns green. You're beginning to see a lot more vegetation in this one strip of land where the, the temperature is actually mild and pleasant and the sun pokes back from behind the clouds. And you're enjoying this climate for about two days before it gets very hot. Uh, the grass becomes sparse and more and more sparse until all that's left around you is just these very resilient, very dry shrubs. The ground under your feet turns uh, more and more red. Uh, it's almost like... Uh, it embodies fire itself, and you're you're feeling it, the heat already upon you. Uh, you're beginning to sweat as you travel further. At this point, I would like to call for a brief break. Oh, actually, somebody roll a d8, uh, and then I'll call for a break, so I know what to prepare for. <laughs> I got it. It's on you. Bam. Okay. Nice. So, nice. One, yeah, sure. Nice. Two, three, four. How many D12s do you need this time? <laughs> uh, still just a one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What did you What did you roll? Five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The most okay. bed. Actually, no D12 necessary. Oh. Is it the good or bad? Oh boy. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, sorry. I didn't mean to react like that. That was that was me looking at my dice. I shit. Break time. <laughs> <laughs> Go. You're well. free. One thing. It's been enough days where um, Pip would have completed the learning the potion. Uh, the as thus far you've been on the road for five days. And plus, there's a two where you rested. So, yeah, two days ago it would have been done. Woo! <clears throat> okay, and actually I can stop with this music because you have reached a, a point where you're no longer uh, in a snowy place and you are officially headed towards the Bloodstone Gorge. Uh, the name itself really refers to the, the, the canyon. Uh, right now you're kind of headed towards it. Um, and uh, uh, the 
The first time when you're forced to take a detour is five days into your westward journey, uh, as one particular path that you had originally taken on the way east uh, has now suffered from a... Uh, rock fall? What's the word? Landslide? Why am I forgetting? Rockslide. Yes! Rock oh, slide, man. landslide. Thank you. I, I could only think of Avalanche, but that's incorrect. Um, Arin doesn't seem too worried. You just have to backtrack a little bit and take a higher path. Um, essentially, like, the... You, you would have to normally travel in between these two cliffs, and it's just going to take you atop the cliffs itself, just by backtracking a little bit. Uh, so it doesn't look like he, or, or any of you, for that matter, would... Uh, lose track of the direction you're going and how to get back on the road that you're more familiar with. But as you have now a higher uh, point of view, uh, and you can see you can see surroundings that you couldn't before, and northward, uh, there's a bit of a higher hill compared to where you are, where you spot that there is a, a, a shack of some kind, a cabin that way. Um, you would have to go out of your way to go check it out. So as Arim points it out, uh, you have the, op the option of either going there or just continuing uh, on your way. Um, from where you are, you'd be able to tell that it's uh, kind of an old cabin. It looks like it's struggling to even remain standing. Nope. I'm not doing it again. Nope. If if anyone wants to go, you're you're gonna have to say so, cause I refuse to sidetrack us for the fifth time in a row. I I mean I have to admit my curiosity is burning. Okay, well if Furion wants to, I guess we have to. <laughs> Yes, give in to that temptation. Oh, you don't have to say it like that. I'm actually I very say prone to something everything like, like this. I mean, I'm just very prone to, the, to this sort of behavior, actually. G good. Y you're so easy to tempt. Get this halfway there. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. You, uh, people leading the way and eventually the whole group following, um, you carefully approach the cabin. You can all roll a... Oh, um, are they still tough? tough? again. <laughs> <laughs> they keep being so tough. Such tough horses. Also, um, they're cows today. Just to, <laughs> just to switch it up a bit. things up. <laughs> yeah. Undead cows, let's go. Those are marsh cows specifically. They have these like really long legs. Um, spider cows. Uh, where was I? I need everybody to roll perception checks. Uh, Matt, take over RM for now. Okay. Roll, roll for him too. Damn. Okay, you're like on very high alert. <laughs> oh my god. Very high, the highest alert, even. <laughs> what about you, Aaron? Uh, what do your elf eyes see? Pretty well. <laughs> okay, uh, you're all just being cautious. Uh, you're you're going there, moved partially by me, by curiosity, partially because you've been riding for so many days and like your legs hurt, uh, a different kind of hurt from when you're walking yourself yourselves, um, and the idea of that's. That could be potentially a, a, a place where you could rest, or at least it's an excuse to no longer be riding for maybe five to ten minutes. Uh, but you remain very, very cautious. Uh, you glance around, you don't hear anything, you don't see anything. And the closer you get, the more obvious it becomes that the, the cabin is long abandoned. It's weathered and looks very solitary in this landscape. You can see the paint on uh, on its wooden exterior has faded, and there's a small portion of the roof that has collapsed in. Uh, the door is swinging open on its own, moved by the wind. 
you don't figure that anyone is here or anyone has been here for a while. What would you like to do? Does it look like it belonged to Atarans or Yvelsi or anything that would give us an idea of who once lived here? From the outside, looking towards it, uh, the only thing you'd really be able to tell is that it's definitely not of Plurnan construction. Uh, but the exact Lidarin that might have lived here, it's... Uh, uh, you can't really say from the building alone. But I'd better go make sure that... Uh, no one's dying in there. <laughs> I mean... I just want to know who would live this far out alone like this. Is Pippa entering the cabin? Yep. Okay, you uh, you pick your head in and again it's clear that not only, not only nobody lives here but they haven't come back in a long time. You see just a handful of forgotten belongings covered in a thin layer of sand and grime um, that just are scattered throughout. There's no. a single rickety table, one chair, a worn out bed frame. It's kind of small, um, the, the cabin itself. It's more of like just a one room kind of a, a place. Um, Part of a corner of a room has caved in and it's covered in rubble. Anything of Plurn and Macon here, or is it just all sort of Ladarian stuff? Uh, it still feels all Ladarian at a glance. Uh, you spot uh, a, a set of clothing on the bed uh, that uh, appear feminine, and uh, the. Mm. the uh, like, whoever used to wear them, they seem to be an adult, not as big as, as a Brook. More virion size. And does it seem like this place just sort of collapsed from age, or does it look like something bad happened here? That's an investigation check. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh! That's a, that's a natural 20. It is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Pip, you're gathering the courage to actually start moving things around, uh, um, and you're you're convinced. Uh, uh, you're you're applying the things that Pontifex has been teaching you, and you're walking around uh, like you're a proper investigator, and you know exactly what's going on in here. And it just really feels like this place has been abandoned uh, and has eventually just. Uh, surrendered to the, the passage of time it doesn't look like whoever lived here left um like packed their things uh, you find jars full of of uh, items that have rusted away over time uh clothes like an entire um closet full of them uh and now that you you can take a, a look at multiple sets of clothes um, this feels like a place where Anetara Va would have would have lived. Um, you spot uh, like the the way that they decorate their clothes with feathers uh, gives it away pretty quickly. Mm. Um, the roof seems to have collapsed due to age rather than anything hitting it. And as you're sh shifting through the rubble, uh, you're beginning to find things of note that actually give you an idea of what this person was even doing here in in a location like this. Um, the drawers were full of strange metal instruments that didn't really tell you much, but you kind of understand when under, when under the rubble you find something that has fallen over that was standing on like three metal legs. Uh, and if it weren't for the fact that, that Arin has one such instrument, at the at the very top of his tower, maybe you wouldn't have known what the, what this is. But under the rubble, there is a broken telescope, and you're putting together that whoever lived here uh, used to study the sky. Mm. 
the um, one item that somehow seems to have survived over time, completely immune to being weathered by the passage of time, is an item that's about time itself. It's a small little hourglass. The sand inside is pure white. Yeah, Pip will pick that up and it, if there's a, is there like an old blanket that was left on the bed? Yeah, yeah, just plenty of blankets left there. Uh, well, it is a warm environment, so it would be like a thin one. Okay, Pip's gonna grab like the sheet and use that as sort of like a, a way to carry uh, a bunch of stuff out of here. So he's gonna take the telescope and like- A little bundle. As, uh, yeah, as much clothes and random trash and garbage that he can possibly put in that little bundle. And he's dragging it out. <laughs> and on the way, he sees uh, the others waiting and says, I got some trash. You, <laughs> Elsie, love trash. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Is this yours to carry? Uh, yeah, I can carry it. That is not what I need. This whoever, is not your home. Whoever lived here has been gone for years and 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 maybe more years. So you feel it free to take it? Yeah, I mean, I feel like if I'm dead, y'all can take my stuff. That's noted. I mean, it certainly doesn't look like anyone's planning on coming back for any of this. Oh, hey, Professor? Yes? You think you could fix this? Holds up the telescope. Uh, I likely could. Uh, what what part of it is like broken exactly? A lot. Um, all the lenses are cracked, uh, um, and like it's bent. A heavy weight fell on it, and it stayed on it for a long time. Um, I'll, the majority of it could be fixed with. Uh, very thorough, very lengthy use of mending if you have it available. Uh, but some parts mm. will have, like, you, mending cannot straighten out the parts that are bent. So you'll probably need somebody who can work with metal in order to finish fixing it. Oh, we don't know anyone like that. <laughs> I could uh, fix most of it, but uh, the bent bits, maybe asking Tekka? He's good with, like, tools and such and just being really strong he could right. just be it <laughs> might be better actually to go to Tekka first and have him try to straighten it out and then any cracks or breaks or anything of this sort uh, i can deal with it might take a bit of time though that the particular spell i, I don't actually know but i have a wand that can do it I am fine with repairing things. I still do not agree that this being taken. This was someone's home and sanctuary. What if... I left my world point card information so that if they do come back, then they could ask for it back. Fine. You will do that, and I will leave this behind. Uh, and Tekka picks uh, out of his bag his own hourglass. <laughs> is that to count how long it takes for them to get back no 
this. This is a keepsake. In case they come back. And we will return what is theirs. Okay. It goes back in and uh scratches his world point card information into the table with his knife. <laughs> <laughs> you have further ruined this place. <laughs> that's that's why we for the Plurnans are here. <laughs> and now everyone who comes past here can contact you. Yes. <laughs> that's what I'm counting on. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hey, hey, I have an idea. I wonder if I can try and find the person who lived here. Since I have stuff that belonged to this person. I pull out the scale. <gasps> I cast scrying on whoever owned these clothes. <laughs> okay, so uh, you <laughs> do not know the targets, so that's a plus five to their save. But you do have a possession of garment, which is a minus four, so your DC, uh, like they they have. Are a there plus any hair on the clothes? <laughs> um, uh, you rolled a natural twenty. There would be strands of hair on like the pillow. Nice. And like you really need to go back in there and scoop them up, but you do find some. Uh, you find that this is red hair. Just like a very small number of strands. So, what's your DC normally for for uh, spells? Normally, 16. <clears throat> so, they only need it to be the 15. Wait, no, 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 you have hair, sorry. Um, so, minus 10 plus 5, they have to be the 20? Uh... Twenty-one. You don't have a 15 or a 16? 16. 16. Oh, 16, okay. <clears throat> 21. Uh, and it is a wisdom saving throw. Okay, remind me, what's your... what's your? Um, you're looking through a gemstone, Runamella right? Runamella scale. Works? Yes, okay. Yeah. Um, so you hold up this yellowish scale to your eye. Uh, and uh, the spell takes effect very quickly. You immediately see a landscape that you have just abandoned. You see snow uh, surrounding a cabin that looks just like the one you're standing next to, but it's fully fixed up. Uh, the None of it is broken. It looks like it's currently being lived in. Directly outside of this cabin in the snowy landscape, you see a woman, Anitarava, with long, curly, red hair, who is looking up at the sky through this telescope that is uh, obviously fully operational. Um, and at first, you're just taking in the view, and it seems pretty normal. Um, she doesn't look like she's wearing enough heavy clothes for the climate. It's currently snowing in that scene. Uh, but she, she doesn't seem to be particularly cold. She's looking through the telescope and looking and looking and she takes notes and keeps looking and you're focusing on her face and realize she seems sad. You figure that somebody who ha has come all the way out here in the middle of nowhere to set up a cabin to study the sky, it's probably their passion, probably what they want to do, but this woman seems to be in distress 
and the more she scribbles in her notebook, the more uh, you get this, like, bad feeling. Something is wrong. You finally bring your attention away from her and a bit further away to her surroundings and suddenly your stomach sinks. The sky is really, really, really close to her. She is under a dome, and above her isn't a night sky. It's something blurry. She is in a snow globe. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> All right, pull out the board. Pull out the conspiracy board. <laughs> what? We forgot to put snow globe on the board. How many... How many women did this man put in a snow globe? <laughs> <laughs> All right, next scrying target is absolutely going to be whatever the heck his name was. Uh, I gotta find it. But I can't cast <laughs> scrying until after a short rest. What was his name? Uh, I gotta look. Heck was his name? The snow globe person. Nui gave you the name. I'm almost nope, there. Not this one. I'm almost there. <laughs> Let's see who gets to it first. Huh. No, I scrolled past it. Huh. Oh, Mander. Oh, no, Mander. I trusted a man. He was charming, kind, with a warm smile. Always made me laugh. I thought we'd always be together, and so did he, but he had different plans. He saw me as a thing. I seem to be very far away from him now. His name was Onamander. Uh, yeah. Okay. So he's a serial offender. <laughs> well, that was unexpected. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Pip just exits the scrying spell and has the most bewildered, uh, bewildered expression on his face. And he, he does what I did, which was go, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> he said a snow globe. I, like Nui. Yeah, yes. A and I see no snow globe here. No. I I don't know what's going on here, but I think that that Onomander guy, I think he did this to more than one person. Unless there's a lot of people that just put people in snow globes. Where did you find that other one? Uh, Glimmer had it. I traded something shiny for it. D do you know where she got it from? No, just somewhere. But I'm whipping up a conspiracy right now. <laughs> and it's based off of pretty much nothing M most conspiracies are but the, like the person we're about to see is called the collector <laughs> what if he just collects people <laughs> that no couldn't be <laughs> oh it absolutely could people don't get nicknames that are that vague for no good reason I'm, I, I gotta look into this more. Next time we rest, I'm gonna see if I can look into this Onamander. And if we find this person and free her from the snow globe, then I'll give her this stuff back. Most of it. Most of it. You don't suppose that something your your book might know? 
a... You know, I, I haven't looked at the book in a while. What book? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Yep. Where's the book? The title of the campaign. <laughs> <laughs> Where is the Outlander's Guide to Lenaria? For some reason, oh, Virion still has it. <laughs> Virion is beginning to collect just all the little pets. Seed will be next. <laughs> I mean, there's just like they say about it. So powerful. Just watch where you put Orm. it. Do you know anything about people putting women in snow globes because they're pretty? Oh, for any reason, really. <laughs> well... What if you rolled a f like a 5 or below on a d100? What then? <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Go for it. True. <laughs> <laughs> now me, remember me what... Uh, uh, sure. What uh, Orm can learn. Oh, remember. Nope. Ooh. Are things that uh, would have been in the guide in the first place. It would have added to, to be something that, like, Jamiel himself came across. Mm. Um, But... It's always worth a try, you know? Uh, yeah. Because you don't know. Like, he has been all over the world, and there's mm. a non zero chance he might have come across somebody <laughs> who specifically brags about putting people in snow globs. Um, maybe he got put into one once and escaped. But regardless, Ooh. as you ask, uh, as you ask, uh, that's a very specific example. Uh, um, as you ask <laughs> Orm about it, uh, um, he he is clueless and a little upset that this is a thing, but yeah, nothing nothing he can tell you. Uh, uh, thank you for trying. Orm feels bad. He couldn't help. It's okay, mm -hmm. Orm. I'm uh, really disturbed about this. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you happy I remember the book? Pip is gonna um, turn over the hourglass just to make sure she's not actually in the hourglass <laughs> and not the snow globe. <laughs> um, you turn over the hourglass and there's a moment where things feel odd. It's just the briefest moment, but you can tell something magical just happened. You just don't quite know what. Hmm? What? It's a pleasant Professor, kind of I felt feeling, magic. though. <laughs> uh, -oh. uh, yeah, that's good. Class feature, instant <laughs> cast, ritual, detect magic. <laughs> magic Why not just identify? <laughs> <laughs> we already know it's magic. <laughs> What, the way you said it made it sound like, like you felt a, a magic <laughs> that it wasn't obvious. <laughs> no, I felt it in my bones. Uh, you... <laughs> it was a magic. I felt the magic. <laughs> what kind of magic am I talking about? Anything magic. weird? <laughs> is this just normal? Everything as normal as expected? Uh, for one, it is Ladaria magic. Um, and you, you get a, an odd feeling of familiarity. Not from whatever, whatever um, effect this is, but more by what this is made of. Uh, the sand inside isn't sand, it's stardust. Oh. The magic itself, you would consider it something akin to ooh, perhaps abjuration magic, if you were to assign it one of the schools of magic you're familiar with. It feels like something that that is designed to to assist and protect. Assist and wouldn't protect, I suppose. Nothing malevolent about it strikes you at all. Eh, uh, something, something, Stardust. Okay, uh, uh, I need eleven minutes. 
<laughs> He's gonna cast identify. <laughs> These are some very tense uh, eleven minutes. Uh, yeah. I'll be making an item for you later, but this is called a Stardust Hourglass. As mentioned, it is filled with stardust instead of sand. Um, whoever carries it um, is given advantage to initiative checks as it creates like this tiny effect of slow to time. Whoa. Uh, it That's feels like enter. it is not. You know, not to like throw um, anything crazy out there, but the magic that I am understanding, this would be incredibly useful for a a man whose reaction time is perhaps <laughs> incredibly <laughs> lacking, perhaps uh, due to centuries of age. And additionally, Pontifex, so this doesn't feel like a magic item that has been crafted to perform a certain effect. More like whoever found the Stardust and decided to make an hourglass out of it was like unaware that it would carry any kind of effect to it. So it's magical because of what it's made of, rather than magical because it's been crafted to carry magic. Got it. Do you want it, Professor? I just feel hey, it is a magic thing and it it seems like it was made as a product of accident and circumstance, which I am both annoyed by and intrigued by, but I also two hundred and thirteen gold. <laughs> is that this is like an arbitrary number that you came up with. I need exactly that much. What do you need these gold for? Is it going to be spent responsibly or irresponsibly? Uh, I need I need the money to make a potion that will help us. Right. So. So. So I, I will give sell you money this to, to you. make a potion for us, and I also get an hourglass out of it. Yeah. Uh, Pepe, in one of our future tutoring sessions, uh, we are going to go over a little-known aspect of life called economics. Uh, but until then, you have yourself a deal. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, I will give you 213 gold pieces. Oh my god. Aaron, I, I said I needed money I'm going to give you 212 gold and then 10 silver pieces to teach him the value of silver. <laughs> I could give you the 213, but then you wouldn't learn anything. I am a businessman. <laughs> <laughs> Baby steps, people. Baby steps. Slow down now. All right, everybody. Hop on your cows. <laughs> Got places to go. Snow globes to see. Uh, the professor um, is going to uh, to run the thread of his amulet of, of the goat, and he's going to basically thread it through, like, the arms of the hourglass or, like, tie the hourglass to it so that it's, like, there with the amulet is just, like, a doubled-up Flava Flav kind of chain. Uh, so he just has this dangling Sardos hourglass hanging off of his neck next to uh, the god uh, of who probably doesn't like that stuff. <laughs> 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 like, stop playing with time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I went to go fast. <laughs> Secretly a hedgehog. So what's the plan exactly? Keep traveling. Uh, and after a brief rest in the evening, try and scry on Otamander. Okay. Uh, and is Pontifex holding on to the, the hourglass? Uh, yeah, he's threaded it onto his necklace after buying it off a of pit. <laughs> this benefits everyone involved. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, I don't know why, but something in my head tells me, it's something about my dragon chess is telling me a wizard is better when they go first <laughs> and not the last. One who decides the battlefield, it is good that they go first and not after the battlefield has done stuff. Your, your average initiative go has gone from a 7 to a 12. I will take it. <laughs> okay. 
So, you set up uh, the tower at the end of the day. Uh, you have found... Uh, Aaron has successfully found uh, his way back to the more familiar path, so you're still fully on schedule to, to go where you need to go. Um, in the evening, what are you using, Pip, to, to attempt to scry upon Onamander? Well, first, Pip will go to the observatory, mm -hmm. since that feels like the the most thematically appropriate place to do this. Um, and Pip doesn't have a whole lot of information about Onamander, but um, it is secondhand knowledge, so it's a plus five to the DC. And Pip has no possessions of Onamanders, except maybe the is there a fragment of the broken snow globe that was left behind? Would you have taken it? I I mean, I have in my inventory a broken snow globe. <laughs> but I... <laughs> oh, wow. I mean, if you cast it... <laughs> magic snow globe. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um... You, that may count as a possession. Okay, so then it would just be a plus one to his roll. Mm -hmm. um, so DC is 16. It's evening. You're standing up here on the topmost floor of the tower, which you specifically requested Aaron to, to create tonight. Um, despite the sun being set, it's still very, very warm. Um, and uh, you, have, you have permanently just put away all of your heavy winter clothes by this point in your journey. Um, so you look out. It's dark all around, it's quiet, uh, dry, warm. Uh, you can just barely see the, the color of the stone at the base of the tower, that intense red that is getting more and more saturated the further you go. And you hold up the, the scale, the crystal, to your eye. Everything around you is tinted yellow, this golden, beautiful color. You look down at your own hands and at your own surroundings. Nothing has changed at first. And then you you see things shifting around you and you definitely felt like it took an extra moment for the spell to take hold compared to every other time when uh, you have tended to scry upon anyone. Uh, and you feel... You, you feel pulled forward to the point where you have to hold on to the, the little uh, wall in order to avoid falling off the top of Aaron's tower. Uh, and so you cling onto it uh, and, and you try to pull away. It, it feels like you're moving across great distances, so rather like you're you're being pulled forcefully. Uh, by the time your, your sight settles, you're looking straight into the eyes of a creature. Something much bigger than you. Uh, the eyes are this brown, dark, uh, almost black color. Uh, and they're not human or, or humanoid. For a moment you feel like you're actually looking at the visage of a cow or some kind of animal like that and then as you're attempting to put a bit more distance between you and it you realize it's actually an elk uh, not one that you would have heard of or come across previously uh, it has its uh, its horns or I think antlers is the right word um, are made of ice they they sparkle. They you can they kind of see through, uh, and it has a mane that is gorgeous. It's very very colorful and it shimmers. And 
you would have seen this in your life. You would have you would have seen auroras above um, in Lidaria's sky, and the main it looks exactly like uh, uh, an aurora would be in the sky, with the colors shifting a little bit and undulating. And uh, it would be beautiful if it weren't for the fact that you can feel that you are being stared back. Like this creature knows that you are looking at it, much like. Uh, uh, Bremble suit did when you attempted to scry on her. And you didn't know it was possible for an elk to grin, and yet there it is. Mouth twisted with amusement. What would you like to do? Uh, Pip's just gonna keep watching it. See if it is gonna say anything. Okay, you... You hold onto the scale, uh, and you maintain your footing. Uh, the elk is merely standing, and you, you're trying to make sense of the landscape, and you have to actively focus on it. Uh, like, it, the vision itself is trying to slip away from you, and uh, it, it's like you're back near the broken rib, where everything is covered in snow, and is cold and white. Uh, uh, the the creature is merely standing there and yet you feel like you're being pulled as if like a force is holding you by the um, by like your shirt uh, and keeping you really close to this creature uh, until you feel that same force throwing you to the ground and you nearly drop the scale and you barely catch it uh, and the scrying is over. And you can feel that you only scried upon this creature because it allowed it. And the scrying ended because it decided it. Um, this will give Pip nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> is anyone uh, with Pip as he's doing this? Or would you have asked for someone to be there? I don't know if he would have asked for it, but he wouldn't have, like, wanted to, you know, just be alone specifically. So it would have been fine if someone else wanted to be there. But if not, that's fine, too. Um, Pip just, like, scurries down the, the steps and clutches the scale to himself. And I think he would run to, to, uh, to Brook first. And, uh, just say, Brooke, I tried to scry on Onamander and there was a really scary elk there and it grinned at me. I knew I was there and it was looking at me and it's, it was really scary. An elk? A, a elk with teeth. <laughs> <laughs> and a rainbow mane. Oh, that's a lot, Pip so scary well <clears throat> and it pushed me and I don't know how it did that how did it feel that someone put something so terrifying into your head it was horrible would you like to do that upon other people what do you mean you know what you did to Sunny <laughs> Time to learn a I lesson. didn't know she hated clowns. Well, did you hate moose or elks before? No. See? So it's... So anything that you see becomes scarier in your dreams. And causes you to... Well, okay. Let's be honest. Probably not anything, but clowns and grinning elks, they sound pretty spooky because that's like something not that usual. So you said he knew you were watching? Yeah. <sighs> what if he comes for me, Brooke? What if he puts me in a snow globe? <laughs> I don't, well... why are you laughing? 
I don't want to be at a snow globe, Brook. I'm the only one that can let people out of snow globes. Well, see it that way. That means you can at least let yourself out of this snow globe, right? Is that how that works? I, I am not quite sure, but all jokes aside, if people know we're watching them and they can put a lot of other people into snow globes, you should probably tell the others as well. I'm going to tell them. All right. Attention! Attention! The the majority what? of people were probably having dinner at this point, so like most of them what are gathered now? in the kitchen. You drag along those who weren't. Is this I more magic it. items, babe? Nope. I say are everything I just again? saw. Yes. I am in oh. trouble. Um, of course. Onamander uh, is a evil grinning rainbow elk. Okay. This is a bold I, accusation, Pip. I, I, I understand those words separately. Are you being... You're being literal. I'm being completely serious right now. Evil grinning, <laughs> Aurora <laughs> hair, elk standing on two feet, hooves, and it pushed me, and I was just looking at it through the, through the, the, the topaz. This thing's, this thing's really powerful. I mean, if it's putting people in snow globes, it's not that surprising that it's power. I, I was not expecting elk. Just, I'm still. Me neither. I was expecting like a lizard. I thought like Onamander, like Salamander. I was just expecting, I don't know, like a guy. Yeah. Just a regular <laughs> old guy. Just, just a guy. I mean... Nui, Nui didn't mention any of the elk part, so yeah, I, I, would I think feel like that would have. be mentioned if she knew. So, are are you, are you going to be okay, Pip? You're looking a little rattled. I, I just, I really didn't expect that. I, this, I mean, it, he's got to be stopped, right? I mean, how many people has he put into snow globes? Is that our job to stop him? Yep, I'm putting it on our list. Huh. Well, <laughs> Pip, I'm proud of you for facing your fears. Thank you. And I'll go over to Sunny and whisper to her, if you ever want to get back at him, do something with an elk. <laughs> <laughs> I am not the vengeful type, Brook, but that is enticing. I will think about it. <clears throat> at worst, give it to that puppet. It's that information. You can't weaponize my son. <laughs> I just have. <laughs> Brooke, that's too far. All right, just you then. You can tell that the gears are turning in Sunny's head. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Sid, Jory, I would like to commission uh, artwork <laughs> of <laughs> the the grinning elk with ice antlers and a rainbow mane. Pay me. Damn. <laughs> I'll pay you in... Uh... <coughs> nope, I'm not even going to say it. <laughs> Exposure. <laughs> P. 
Hip, what are we to do if this Onamander can enter our minds? The only reason I was able to look at him through the scale, I think it's just because it let me. I, I mean, I have a feeling that this thing lives near where where Pontifex's parents are. Where the witch is. All that snow. We're not planning on backtracking r right now. We're... No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> I don't even know where to look if we did. Uh, we'll just uh, keep our eyes and ears peeled for any other mentions of rainbow elks that might put people on snow globes. I don't know what else we can do, especially if like you said, it only you only saw it because it let you. I have an idea, but it would have to wait for another day. I might be able to talk to I might be able to talk in dreams to Onamandra's victim in the other snow globe. The Atarava that we saw? Ooh. Oh! I bet there's four in the snow globes, one for each kind of Atara. Oh, because he's a collector. I don't know. That's just a theory. We're assuming that this collector is one and the same, with really no basis to go off of other than... It's, a, it's an enormous assumption. It's a big assumption. I'm not going to discount it, because uh, really, somebody who calls himself a, the collector and somebody who puts people in snow globes... I just have a gut instinct that they're the same sort of person, at least. We're going to meet the Collector, and he's just going to be, like, the nicest guy. And we're all <laughs> going to feel really bad. And he's going to be perfectly normal, and not a grinning, toothy elk. <laughs> oh god maybe he's working for the Darien Center and instead of reindeers they use rainbow elves <laughs> 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 oh god please I, I don't I don't think there's much if anything we can do about this now. Maybe try not to alert any more potential powerful creatures to the fact that we might know about them. Sometimes it's best just to stay off of things, radars, if you can. Okay. I'm not gonna scry on Magdragach Nuneth, Lord of the Skies. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> rattles off like five different names <laughs> yeah. probably a, a really really good idea to, to not I might scry on Nuneth I'm really curious about that one permission to scry on Nuneth later do we really want like more eyes a bad idea, it could also be good. Nuneth. Something about Nuneth involves my parents and where they might be. I mean, Kiriel and Muriel told me to seek him out. <laughs> I'm so sick. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 
this may be an obvious question. You haven't tried scrying on your parents, have you? Holy crap, I didn't even think about that! <laughs> Hold on. Holds up. <laughs> Don't pass. Scries on. Scry, Wait, scry, which scry, one do I scry. choose? Which one do I choose? I have to choose one. Uh, is it favoritism? If I pick <laughs> one. Uh, mom. Okay. So same Nothing happens. back at you. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I will tell you that uh, Pip feels like there's something that's preventing the spell from working in the first place. Uh, it might. And there's multiple things that it could be. For example, they could be dead. Essentially an invalid target for the spell. Uh, mm. Second, they might be protected from scrying in some magical manner. Uh, third, they may not be on the same plane of existence that you currently are on. Yeah. Um, whatever, whatever the case, um, you feel like you did your spell correctly. And this is someone you know well, so it, <clears throat> it should work. But you get nothing. Didn't work. Oh no. <laughs> I, I'm nice. just. You're in the tower. I was just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank goodness. <laughs> Battle music begins. <laughs> the elk appears. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> well, I guess we'll meet the collector soon enough. We're almost there, I think, right? I've just been following Arin, honestly. I've kind of lost track of time. Right, if Arin says we are close, then we're close. Um, sorry, this was a bad time for me to eat a piece of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron has his mouth full. Where we're going. Uh, mm, mm. <laughs> right now, Aaron, quick. <clears throat> um, Aaron, yeah, no, we're about, to, we're about to reach the, the canyon proper, meaning that soon we will not be able to rely on the horses anymore. We'll be climbing downward. Uh, in fact, I meant to ask you, we could stop by that same cave that we came out of if we want to visit a, a ten art. Hmm. We do have some metal to drop off. I mean, if we're going to be climbing, do any of you have climbing experience or, or gear? Uh, no, I have falling experience. Arn is the only one who lifts his hand. Okay, Varian also raises her hand. I can be a bird. <laughs> elf team, elf team. Elf team. Okay, so being a bird does actually solve a lot of the climbing problems. All right, yeah. the pip can turn into a big one and fly us around if needed. So I haven't taken the time to learn how to fly myself. It seems sort of redundant. Depending on the terrain, it might not be uh, very navigable for a, a large bird. I mean, go getting down is easy, but if there's anything like up on the on the way down that we might need to access, large birds tend to not fit well in small spaces. Sounds like a plan. Well, sweet dreams. Don't, don't dream of elk. Would 
Would you like someone to stay with you tonight, Pip? Yeah. You could hug me under the blankets. Nope. nope. Well, nope. I am made for this. Nope. This used to be my original job. We're... Yeah, also not me. Uh, if you want, I could leave Seraphis with you. She is uh, a bit attached to me, but I'm sure that she wouldn't mind being Little Spoon for a, a child or something. Is, is anyone going to hug me? What? No, that's weird and gross and creepy. Neferon and will just cling to one of Virian's arms. Oh. I called you creepy. I thought that's like a compliment. I thought that's what you want. I'm not listening anymore. It, My goodness, it's fine. The evil can... bear pouts. <laughs> 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 I, I think Virian does kind of like d instinctively just give him a little like well, like one arm hug because he's clinging to that arm. The Fahrenheit remains quiet. Yeah. Either way, whether you want um, the Fahrenheit or not, I can make sure no elks come in. No elks, please. No elks. Like... <laughs> Well, I can tell you, Pip, that uh, uh, in your dreams no, tonight, no. you, you <laughs> have an elkless sleep. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, the following day, you're ready to hit the road again. Uh, uh, bloop. Okay. Next person to roll a d8, please. Okay. Eight or one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's the opposite of eight, but okay. Oh no. One. Hey. Hey. Hey? I wonder if Pip could try and summon drippers. Drippies? Drippers. Remember the drippers? I do. The little lizards. I bet they're good at climbing. <laughs> Maybe. Or they just slide off of it on account of being very drippy. What's the challenge rating that you can summon uh, animals? Up to one. Oh. Hmm. Unfortunately not. Or up to two, actually. If two is still not. Oh, dang. Them drippers. <laughs> I guess we're like seven, <laughs> le level seven when you encountered or so. You That's need a, right. uh, like, polymorph into Drippasaurus Rex, kind of. <laughs> yeah. You know. Uh, so at this point you are uh, still approaching the the canyon itself um, t -t 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 I lost my spot in my notes I'm sorry <laughs> I went to check on the lizards okay here we are um, most of the vegetation is entirely gone, and it's really, really hot. Uh, you can still travel on your horses for now, but uh, the terrain is beginning to slope. It's uh, You often encounter these large uh, rocks that you have to go around, and the, the terrain itself is scattered with smaller ones that makes uh, um, your, your rides uh, um, unhappy to constantly stumble on. Um... At this point, the heat is like a proper heat. It feels like you're in the middle of summer. Like in, in the span of just uh, less than a week, you went from winter to summer. Uh, and you, you've all um, 
you're wearing just the minimum amount of, of clothing that you that you can manage. Uh, the terrain is fully taken on that uh, that color that the gorge is named after. Uh, and your progress slows down a little bit, much like it did when you were in deep snow, uh, just from the effort that it takes to navigate the, the crumbling terrain and from the the fact that you just have to, to pause often in shade. Um, if you were riding normal mounts, they would have to rest very frequently. Uh, but the fact that, what is it, like every hour that you resummon them? Yeah. Exhaustion <clears throat> for them is really not an issue. <laughs> Just by their very nature. Um... Sorry, I'm checking some numbers. Cool. Much like there came a moment where Tekka had suddenly stopped the group a few days ago, noticing that something was off, uh, this is a moment where Arin uh, brings everybody to a very sudden stop. Um, he doesn't really elaborate, he just jumps down from his mount, so go ahead and roll their, their type for, for now, Austin. Okay. Uh, and he kneels down to look at the ground, and you see him um, just rubbing his hand on the terrain. What's a seven? They are mythical. They're oh. mythical! Um, and they have magical attacks. <laughs> Mm. When Arin stands back up, he he looks worried. He he gestured at, he gestures at the ground that he was just looking at, um, and you can kind of see these markings. Um, they're long and thin. They look like scratches, and there's multiple here and there, even on the surfaces to your side where the the terrain suddenly slopes up, almost like you're in a mini canyon of sorts. Uh, he he says, "There's monsters around here. They're called uh, uh, golden claws, or something like that. Uh, lots of them, a big group. We probably want to get out of here as quickly as we can." He hops back on uh, his horse, uh, um, and he begins to take a slightly different route where the terrain allows it. Uh, one, two, three. You ride for a short while, perhaps a couple of minutes before Arin comes to a very sudden stop again, and he drastically changes direction. Uh, he actually, like, st straight up just says, no, 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 not here. Um, and he takes a bit more further southward. Uh, you're beginning to feel the tension, much like when uh, in the, uh, near the mountain, you were feeling like you were being chased by something. Uh, that kind of, uh, uh, you, you feel that shiver down your spine again. There is something in this area. Uh, then you catch a glimpse of it. Something gold colored uh, the glinting of actual gold off in the distance uh, the the only thing that's uh, that really catches your attention in the area at all um, much like the werewolf had the fangs and claws made of rubies uh, you spot some kind of long skinny creature with uh, golden claws and golden teeth um, it doesn't seem like it spotted you, and Arn is quick to once again change direction and bring the group elsewhere. Uh, and then ahead of you, you spot another, and he turns around, goes another way, and then one more of those creatures. And it's beginning to be apparent that you are surrounded on this kind of vast terrain. Everywhere you go, you seem to see them prowling around and sniffing for your smell. Um... Arian eventually accepts this and says, just prepare to defend yourselves. Uh, and we will begin combat next time, because it's not worth uh, 
starting uh -oh. it now. No. Oh. Uh oh. Ah. Sure, sure. But a I couple will... of fireballs won't just take care of that problem. <laughs> I'll give you a it look at what you're fired, you know? dealing with. Uh, oh boy. Um. Oh, man. These are creatures with like a great number of legs. Um. The the main characteristics that you would that you would spot. Uh, um. And, uh, and notice is uh, the yeah, their their many Whoa. number of oh. limbs uh, and uh, their claws and teeth uh, that uh, glisten in the sunlight. <laughs> it's cute. It's you need to stop finding monsters I want cute. One. Please don't adopt Show these. Me a is it a beast? <laughs> stop can I ball with the can I understand of their legs. <laughs> and that's what we call a session. Ah. <laughs> 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 what CR is this, and how do I turn into it? <laughs> I want to befriend it. I want one as a pet. Paper Please use these on afterwards? the damn map. <laughs> Maybe. Oh. Are they beasts, or are they monstrosities? Beasts. Yes. Oh my god. Wonderful. <laughs> do they have a climbing speed? Probably. Put your mini stone <laughs> right here. <laughs> Yes, mom. <laughs> Do you have minis for the horses, Austin? I, I I have one horse and I need eight eight more. Duchess. Okay. Uh, then I'll work on this in between sessions. Okay. Eight mythical horses. Eight mythical <laughs> horses. <laughs> here you go. Okay. Here's a grid. Uh, so yeah, I'll be calling it here, because otherwise, if we start combat now, then we will go over, way over time. Uh, so, thank you for playing. Will I have all of you next week? Yeah. Uh, should, yeah. 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 Happiness! Yeah, so. Alright, well then, I will see you next Sunday. I hope you had fun, I hope you got spooked, yeah, and absolutely. I hope you come back for more. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I... <laughs> All right, then I'll be ending the stream now. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.